Hello, my mindful community. We're still on track how to pass your technical interview to become social engineer, sales engineer, or at any role, at the pre-sales role, being technical. As that video, I'm going to share with you my personal two resumes. Yes. And I'm going to walk you through what I think worked for me and what you can take from those resumes and put that in yours. And those two resumes that we're going to cover in this video. First resume that helped me to get into Oracle as being socials engineer, being or getting out almost right out of school. And the second resume we're going to walk through is the one that helped me to get at the role as being socials engineer at HashiCorp. Are you ready? <laughs> I am. Let's go. On. Now as we covered what that video is going to be about, I want to just set the stage. The first one I want to share with you is that card. Don't stop until you're proud. Why I'm sharing that with you is, I assume if you're watching that video, you're going through interview processes or maybe some changes in your life and a lot of time it can be challenging and it's normal. Believe it or not, and one of the reasons why it took me so long to record that video because I was going through my own challenges and those challenges can be related to your personal life, career life, and so on and so on. And the truth is, even though I'm being in the pre-sales role quite a while, close like five, six years, and I still going time to time what is called imposter syndrome, or sometimes I don't feel quite myself confident enough and so on and so on. What I want to share with you is that is normal. And again, there is case that sometimes you're going through uh, moments of doubting yourself. Just find the tools to go forward. Challenges are good. Ch challenges or pains that you might experience that's something that makes you stronger, right? Okay, coming to the pre-setting stage and walking through the interviews or going through the resumes, I want to share with you, I'm going to share the screen with you what I'm looking at right now. Let me share it. Hold on a second. We're looking at tax skills that will earn you more money. Whether you want it or not, money are freedom, right? And that is something I want you to use as inspiration or possible goal or whatever you choose to take it. Look at that. Let's just briefly look at the skills, what is it required? And I, I'm going to share that link with you um, at the top or just below in the comments. So let's look together. So the first thing you see is Spark and how much that product being grown and how much the average salary you can get. Continue down, Azure. Azure is one of the cloud products. Continue cloud. That probably might not be a surprise for you that Cloud is continuously been growing. Back in the day, people or customers, enterprise level customers been asking, what is the cloud? Why cloud? Today they're asking how to move there, how to migrate, how to start using SaaS products, software as a service. You can look at those products. And what I want to share with you today, Cassandra. Cassandra, and if you look at all this listed before items, you might find that that product is where you find the average and your salary is being shown the most or the highest paid. Why Cassandra and why I think that's relevant before we jump into your resume building is because you want to put in your resume the skills, especially technical skills that are relevant to the market. Relevant to the market. And if I will give you advice right now, if you don't know cloud, if you haven't been exposed, exposed to, let's say, either way, as services, there's a plenty of resources out there, Udemy or Coursera, where you can just jump in, 
watch the videos, educate yourself, what is a cloud, uh, IS, PaaS, SaaS, and get into the field. Don't be discouraged, yes. A lot of content that you're going to walk through might feel or seem a little bit intimidated. That is normal. And I'll, I'll share something more with you. You know why a lot of times that information being filled or pursued as intimidated? Because a lot of time, tag thing is something that being placed outside of your comfort zone, something that you cannot relate to your day-to-day -day life. And the beauty of it, the more you're going to be exposed to that, the more comfortable you will become. One thing I want you <laughs> to promise me if you can, uh, if you're pursuing that role, the first thing I want you to do, just jump in and watch what is AWS, how they work, and how to build your first application using AWS. Talking about, I'm looking at that slide as Cassandra. What is Cassandra? Cassandra is an open source database. And if you ask why to care about it, let me ask you, have you been using Facebook? Have you ever wondered how this backend is being wired or in other words how facebook is able to provide you the services or your feeds that you might be currently looking at at the scale which facebook are curating and the answer is at some point facebook figure out that databases that have been using not quite been wired to the scale where they are why because Facebook had billions of users and they developed such a product, Cassandra, which later became as an open source. Why are we talking about Cassandra? Again, if you're at the beginning of your journey of getting in the field, you want to be exposed and the most used product, preferably open source. And one of those products I want to share with you is a Cassandra. Once you figure out or find the value of Cassandra or maybe get some of the hands-on experience, your resume, by putting that product in your resume, you become much more wanted in the hiring market. I wish someone told me that information when I was putting my resume and I didn't have that advantage. I want you to have it. And earlier in the previous Recordings I showed you or shared with you uh, some other products uh, which been developed by HashiCorp as also Terraform and Vault and you can find those certi um, pass those certifications and put them on your resume and right, right away your resume will pop up and be become more wanted in a position that you might want to pursue. And now that is the time to walk through resumes again. What I have shared with you, that is advices that or information that I wish I would receive at the beginning of my career. I didn't have it, but dearly from my heart, I want to share that with you. Let's jump to the resume. Just in a second before I will share that resume with you, if you ask where or which company you can apply after looking into Cassandra as a database, so this is a company that I recently joined, Datastacks. Datastacks is known as a company to provide the value in four real-time applications. And we are always hiring. We do have internship program that currently running. And if you're willing to put your work and be around the people who can support you and the company who have all the resources, that might be the right place for you. And welcome. <laughs> this is my first resume that I'm going to share with you. To be honest, that's been a while since the last time I look at that. We're going to walk through that together. And I'm going to highlight uh, what do you want to put at your resume if you want to get to the draw what we or where we started at the beginning. As a disclaimer, again, that resume been used by me getting out of school, not having as much of a professional experience. And for that reason, you might see as 
that part is the whole standard. You want to put your name, uh, your phone number, your address, um, please put your LinkedIn profile. If it's something that you haven't been working, add, if you don't have one, please create. If you don't have that updated, update and put all the right keywords into that so recruiters can find you. To be honest, all my roles that I've been reached out and all opportunities that I've been considering, all those contacts have been coming to me through LinkedIn. So I love LinkedIn, I highly recommend and I want you to use it. Then if you're coming as a recent graduate and if you are switching your career and you happen to go through boot camp, most likely you want to put your education. Why? Because if you're coming from, let's say, civil engineering and you want to get into technical role, you want to highlight your skills and what you have learned so far. In my case, coming from university, I wanted to highlight what I have studied, what coursework I did, and the skills. I'm aware that some people can be feel a little bit intimidated to put all skills or ability what they have. Why? Because there's some people that have been overly conscious what they know and what they don't know. Resume, it's not the place where you want to play being shy. You want to expose or dare to wish for something you are willing to get. By that, uh, looking at this line, I put being master in those skills and proficient in others. At that time, if you asked me to write something in Ruby on Rails, it would most likely would take me some time. And most likely I'll be really highly challenged by really writing something on the fly. But yet, because I've been exposed to this language and I knew how it worked, and the theory of it, I put it. You want to show or make your resume as the best business card of your possible self. Don't be shy. Or play the card, fake it until you make it. But don't exaggerate on that, okay? Because you can be tested. <laughs> Expand, but uh, to the sense where you can master the skill at the short amount of time that you've been given. Then I'm talking about work experience. As uh, I told you, that resume has been mostly used uh, as I was coming from university. My first full-time job I happened to have at blockchain space. And the way I had it, it was from my community of friends who I reached out uh, at the point when I want to get into the space and get my professional, you know, full-time job. Why I'm highlighting that and why it might be relevant to you, I'm aware of how that hard to find your first job. First job when you're switching that career or maybe you're just coming out of school. We are all exposed to this, like, you know, the best case scenarios or the stories that have been played in the best case kind of world, but the reality is, is, is no, it's never, it's not always the case. And I've been living in this kind of almost delusional world as soon as I graduated Berkeley studying computer science. I said, oh, as soon as I graduate, I'll be, able to find a job like left and right and in reality it was not the case i it took me some time to find a job a lot of perseverance a lot of drama from my side a lot of doubts up and downs and that is normal the more you go through this roller coaster the better the stronger you will become so if you're coming from again switching your career you want to bring into your network, your resources, and keep applying, keep sending your resumes at the places that are available. Uh, I will come back to, to this role 
uh, that I found out as my full-time job. I want to look down and show you uh, the something that you don't want to be, again, shy about. You want to put your projects that they've been working. Uh, those projects can be your school projects or courses, or maybe something that you took as a additional resources or the lessons on your site. You want to describe them as much as you can. So here, looking now at my resume, uh, the things that they can probably improve is that I would put more descriptions. So right here, uh, I put the lines and to be honest, now looking back, that resume looks a little bit immature and probably that is exactly why I got relatively entry position at Oracle. So if you're looking at the more proficient, more senior position, you want to be more descriptive. You want to, to fill this line and be more explosive with the numbers, with the technologies that you've been working with. And if it happens that you don't have as much of a technical experience or you have not been coding as much, my advice to you would be, again, go to these courses as a Coursera or Udemy or Udacity. Take this code, try to put your hands on, follow the instructions, follow the YouTube. And by finishing these courses, you can put all the skills as your project, okay? Talking about the timeline, uh, you can put the timeline how long you've been working on these projects. And you can put the technical title, what you're wishing to, to be called. So if you're going with that route as you're going from the route of being self-learn, put the title as being self-learn software engineer and put all the skills that you learned from that resource where you've been going through. And really important, put all the skills or languages that you've been interacted with. Projects. Here you can put additional resources or the side hustles that you went through. So those projects uh, from personal story as on this side, as a work experience, I put my internship in. And in the project, something that I've been working through, going through my technical related classes. If you're coming from, again, boot camp or not having much of the technical exposure uh, from professional world, you can put projects or expand this project side in the more broader side where you can put everything what you have learned in a more detailed way. Believe it or not, tech world is being hungry, especially today when the market is being really shaky and the cloud space constantly hiring. If you show through your resume that you are hungry and able to learn, learn fast and you're not you're being unstoppable. Um, a lot of times one can say, yes, um, the universities that you graduated really matter. But a lot of times I've seen individuals who've been getting in this field, not having the diploma, but they've been shown projects, dedication, the results that have they have achieved through going through the courses and classes that they went through. And talking about the leadership, if you happen to have any volunteering job or maybe the something that you were willing to put together and create and lead and influence others, surely put that together. Now to summarize as a frame or some advice is what I share with you. One of the things that you want to focus on your resume when you create. First, you absolutely want to highlight your technical skills if you have those. If you don't, go learn 
create uh, go through certifications and put those in resume second because we're talking about the field as being solutions engineer or being at the pre-sales role what recruiters are looking after is not only your technical skills it's also your personal your social skills your sales skills and the biggest difference between software engineer role resume and solutions engineer resume the biggest difference is in the second one you want to highlight that you can speak speak project learn to put together meetups you can organize and connect people it's not only about technical skills what pre-sales roles are needed the second part that's really crucial and significant is your ability to speak share and connect other people and that is a point where i want to come back to the first point um, as what i listed my work experience i've been fortunate enough to to get into the space as an ecosystem developer and that is the space where i find out what's the difference between between being a coder, a software engineer, and how to be technical in not technical world. Yes, exactly. So that role, I've been going to a lot of conferences and I was speaking about what is blockchain is or how to, or what is the value of solidity or smart contracts. Believe it or not, that was my first, first point when I've been forced to give presentation or talk to the masses. Believe it or not, I was really highly insecure. My English was much worse than it is today. And it was hard, but I guess my passion and believe my, to myself really overcame me. When you're putting together your resume, you really want to put together again and highlight the skills that you're able to talk or teach other or talk about really complex things in more simplistic way. If you don't have that experience, I will challenge you. The next skill, which you will learn through certification or maybe through building that, your next resume. Next skill that you will learn, technical skill. Try to explain that to someone who's trying to get into the role or maybe who is curious. Or maybe who is not curious, but try to get them or deliver that idea where you have the value of that subject that you're learning to them. Yes, it might be challenging and you might feel a bit puzzled at the beginning and that's normal. The more you try, the better you become. So that is a review overview of my first one and let's get to the second resume. Just before we look at the second resume, I want to ask you, what are you looking for? Are you looking for your first professional job? Are you looking for finding the job of your passion? Or maybe you're looking for career. The biggest difference between job and career is a job that you can do anything and just be paid for it. But that is anything, it doesn't imply that you have a passion to that. It doesn't imply that you're willing to go through the stages of being uncomfortable, get to the stage that you go and get it. And that is the difference where career comes into place, such as career is something that absolutely you do, you do due diligence and there's some points um, which you happen to do which you don't like but i'll tell you once you find your career once you find that the right fit for you your ceiling it doesn't exist your growth is unlimited and that is a preach i am willing to share and one of the reasons why i'm showing you my resumes and sharing that experience from my own self because again I want you at least believe in yourself, one. Second, I want to accept you to accept all the challenges that you're going through. Challenges are good, challenges are beautiful. You know when they're beautiful? When you accept them, when you find a way 
to battle through, to rewire yourself to find the beauty in the most painful moments that you're coming from. Okay? Again, remember where we started? <laughs> Don't stop until you're proud and you're your biggest judge ever. And additional note, one of the reasons why it took me so long to record that video, not only because I didn't have time, I did have time, but I was going through uh, some doubts or maybe challenging myself, oh, I'm confident enough to share this message. And that was my the personal you know, struggle and battle to go through. And the reason I'm sharing that with you, going through my own discomfort at some level, I said, damn it, you know, if it's <laughs> to be, it's up to me. And if you feel connected or related to some of this sharing that I do with you, please let me know, leave your comment or put some up because that is something really encourages me to go forward and encourage you. At the end of the day, there is one thing to go and do your work or pursue your career. There is another thing to share with the world and get into this unknown space or getting into or out of your comfort zone, which I constantly do as I recording that video. I promise that is the last thing before I jump into the resume. If you're coming, do you remember we discovered this first resume and I told you put something on your resume where you're sharing your teaching, you're explaining technical terms to not technical people. I came to this world as being social engineer. I came with completely broken English. And one of my passions or the reasons why I keep recording this video is because it challenged me in one way to communicate, to deliver the message in the most concise way. So my audience or you personally can understand that. And again, delivery of each, don't compare yourself to the Tony Robbins or any of those people who are coming out on the stage. Those people, people who deliver TED Talks, they polish the script. They put the script together. They run over and over through that. Some of the parts they can memorize, but the majority of those, they just speak out of the heart. Why? Because they've been repeatedly going over and over again through the script. I'm sharing that story from my personal bringings where I started from recording these videos and how that related to building your resume. It's okay that you might feel self-conscious when you record or when you're sharing your pitch. The more you're going to do that, the better you become. Okay? That is something that I continue doing and improving. So let's look at our second resume. Let me put that in recording. So that is second resume. If you ask um, why did I switch my first role from being social engineer at Oracle, at some point being promoted to staff solution engineer I figured out that I wanted to have more challenge in a way such as I wanted to have more fast paced environment. Why? Because if you join the big corporations, cloud corporation, most likely, that is an amazing point to start again, because you're going to be given all the resources, but a lot of times they're not quite enough type of place to learn from real experiences. Again, I'm being really dearly fortunate to have my team and manager at Oracle, but uh, at some point I realized that I want to get out from the, to the field and get my own bruises. And that was my intrinsic force to get out and jump into startup nation. <laughs> and um, later putting together that resume I get hired by HashiCorp. And HashiCorp, we just IPO last year, that company became public. And till today, just recently, I heard 
uh, the news that Terraform reached I believe billion downloads talking about open source. If you never heard Terraform, great tool. If you have a team less than five people, you can use Terraform Cloud for free. Looking at that resume, again, uh, you can put some of the design parts, but it's really not necessary. One thing that I decided to put is a quote, such as, I have no special talents, I'm only passionately curious. You can put something like that, and I think the value of that quote, or the quote that you can personally choose for yourself, is something that can speak for yourself. Another way, choose something that not only will make your resume stand out in terms of your sales skills, so your technical skills, you want to, one way or another, to put or show some, like, you know, your interesting self value or interest or some personality, right? Yeah, that is one way. I'm not saying that is the only way, but that is one of the options. Then skills. Um, I listed everything what I have learned at the point when I choose to jump and explore next opportunity. I still choose to keep my education, but again, that is up to you. Depends where you're coming from. I thought because that is my next second role being a solution engineer in the space, I thought that will be my still relevant. But again, that really depends on your case, where you're coming, when you finish your uh, school, if you just recently finished your bootcamp, you probably want to put that line in. If not, just put your education uh, down the line. Now walking through, just talking to you, I think the next one, um, videos that I want to record, I will record the next resume review that gets me, get me into data stack, the current role, that what I'm doing right now, today, as being data architect. Walking after, or going down the line, experience, I put what I have done at Oracle. Again, be as descriptive as you can. And then I almost copied what I have done before, what you have seen in the previous resume. But one thing what you can see is that I put a little bit more kind of description at the numbers because I saw that it's relevant. It's something that at that point I figure out what recruiters are looking for. Recruiters are looking for your technical skills, uh, such as all these keywords, front end, back end, languages, what you can. And they also look for the point as as an example, conveying deep understanding to the customer to customer technology for like A, B, to C, and, and so on, so on, so on. You want to show the fact that you are able to communicate or have the knowledge of what cloud is or what the value of that. In the full transparency, looking at that example, what recruiters are searching for are the statements, what you make as convey deep understanding, developing technical documentations, workshops, uh, initiating, teaching technical community, establishing growing engagement. So that is something as a keyword that you want to take and putting or creating a story that is relevant to where you're coming from. And again, if you're coming from being or working as a salesperson, once you teach yourself or educate yourself on the cloud technology or, or this open source that I've been just sharing with you, you can put those technical skills in and make sure that you put those in a sense such as you are able not only understand the hard concepts, that you are also able to articulate and share those concepts with others. Last thing what I want to share with you is that obviously spend time on 
crossing your resume don't worry about cover letter at all those roles that have been interviewing no one ever asked me about cover letter and i'll tell you more before putting together your resume come back to your linkedin and put all this keyword as a description at your linkedin profile because at the end of the day if you speak to recruiter first and you show them that you are capable you can be matched to the culture where you can be hired you send your resume usually it's resume once you connect to the recruiter it can be almost seen as something secondary why because again i'll give you an example have you ever been in social events that might be meetup or maybe conference or something else do you remember meeting or chatting with a person and that person really caught your interest so much that you just find yourself to connect with that person again and that other person pass you the business card what you'll get with this business card probably yes you look at the name and the, the role and but the most valuable resource you'll get from that card is your contact or that person contact information and that was or something that you want to appeal to those recruiters you want to engage them and make them to believe that you are technical enough and you have really strong social and sales skills and the rest something as a resume is something that can be relevant to this business card once you get the contact the rest doesn't matter you can save this contact in your phone and just throw this business card away right that is why i see a lot of times resume and how it's been placed if you find your position where you can recommend you position yourself as a strong candidate to not only recruiter but as a hiring manager it's that resume is being secondary at the end of the day what i am inviting you to do is put the hard work why because they're worth really worth <laughs> worth everything what you do today and let me know what worked for you what did not and share that at the comment wish you luck at any of your next recruiting calls